This video is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. It offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing and much more. And this is just an ideal place for lifelong learners where we can explore new skills, deepen existing passions and simply get lost in creativity. And today I want to recommend you a class called Pet Portraits, Capture Studio Quality Photos of Your Pet by Tabitha Park. Because let's be honest, what can be more fun than spending the quality time with your fluffy friends and then getting beautiful pictures as a result. So, in this class Tabitha shows how to create a perfect setup, shares her camera settings, explains how to keep your pet engaged and posing for you, and then she also teaches us how to edit the pictures that we've made to get the perfect end result. I truly enjoyed this class and I also really enjoyed looking at beautiful pictures of pets that other members made for this class. And here are my fluffy babies, by the way. As you can see, I just couldn't ignore this class because Tabitha's cat looks exactly as one of mine. So, highly recommended. Oh, and there is another very important thing to mention. Skillshare's entire catalog of classes, including this class, now offers subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and Dutch. So, in the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description box under this video, we'll get a one month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity already today and decide if this is something for you. So, thank you so much to Skillshare for supporting my art and for sponsoring this video, and right now let's start the new doll makeover. Hello everyone and welcome to my new Dory paint video! Well guys, today we are going to make Sally from the Nightmare Before Christmas. You know, a couple of days ago I've seen suddenly Billie Eilish singing the Sally song and it sounded so good, really. Billie sounds like a siren in that video. Check it out on YouTube, I will link it somewhere if you haven't seen it yet. And I felt immediately inspired to make a Sally doll. And you know, it's kind of perfect period right now, perfect time between Halloween and Christmas, exactly when the event in the movie were happening and you know I'm really a huge fan of this film and I have no idea why I've never made a Sally doll I don't know years ago I have even rewatched the movie last night because you know even though it's my favorite you should always a little bit watch out with these old things because not everything from the 90s aged well let's be honest but you know this film, The Nightmare Before Christmas, it haven't aged at all. <laughs> like, it could have been made this year by some indie studio, by some indie artist, because it's still super creative. It's really very interesting to look at all these characters, like every character in this film, every monster is worth to be a doll or a project on its own, really amazing, super creative. All the jokes are still landing. Uh, the Jack's son, when he was explaining to the monsters what Christmas is, is my favorite song ever, really. I think it's so funny, like there are so many jokes, like really every line is a joke, amazing. And Sally, yes, Sally is still romantic, Sally is still adventurous, beautiful, really love this girl. So guys, today we are going to make a Sally doll. So guys, let's probably start working. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, support my art here on YouTube with your likes. It's really important for me and for you it takes just a second. So please don't forget to hit the like button. And also please don't forget to hit the bell button to get notified about my new uploads. So this is it. Let's start working. So this is going to be a model for this project because I think the face shape is more or less similar to the Sally's. They both have very round faces and also kind of flat faces with big eyes. And I also like that Laguna has very prominent round eyeballs, a bit like fish eyes, because Sally also has huge round eyes. So let's undress her, cut off her hair and then I will warm her head up with a hair dryer to make it soft and easy to remove.
When her hair and face are gone, I can spray the head with a couple of layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant to make it matte and then I will start drawing the new face. I start with sketching it with watercolor pencils and you know Sally has no eyebrows so let's try to make my doll without eyebrows as well. I've probably never made dolls without eyebrows before in my career. But let's follow the original character as closely as I can. going to draw quite small irises this time because Sally has huge eyes with tiny black irises so I think this detail will help me to reach the similarity between the doll and the character. And then in the end, when the rest of the face is mostly finished, I'm going to draw the seams and the stitches on her face. Okay, now the face is finished, I think, so we can start working on her body and this time, guys, I will have to do some tiny adjustments and I will start with cutting off all these fins and webbing between her fingers. Thank you. 
After this I'm filling in the holes on her legs with tiny pieces of thermoplastic. And then I can sand the body, paint the arms, spray it all with Mr. Super Clear and after this I will be able to cover the body with the same pastels I've used on her face. And I cannot forget the seams and stitches on her body as well and by the way I have a little observation here look the stitches on Sally's face are white and on her body they are black I don't know it's probably absolutely useless but it is what it is Okay, the face and the body look finished to me, so we can move on to the next part of the project and I think I want to work on her hair before I start anything else here. So I've got this acrylic yarn, the color looks good to me, it looks right for Sally. So now I need to turn this yarn into hair and you know Sally has very flat hair. That's why I've decided to use yarn, because rooted hair would have much more volume and yarn hair I can make really straight and very very flat. So I begin with brushing and straightening it with a hair straightener and then I will glue hair to the doll's head using tacky glue.
So this is how it looks in a couple of days when the glue gets completely dry. It's cute, but you know I can make it even more perfect if I wrap a piece of kitchen foil around her head. And like this I'm going to let it for sure for 6-7 hours. And then later, when I remove the plastic, you can see that we've got really perfect straight and flat hair as a result. So, this step is also finished. Now let's attach false lashes, add glossy varnish to her eyes and lips, and then we'll work on Sally's legendary dress. So Sally wears this iconic patchwork dress, of course it will be very difficult to make an exact copy of it, for it I would have to make a white dress and then just paint the pattern on top of it, then it would look absolutely identical. But I want it to look like a real fashion dress, not like a painted doll dress, I want it to be like a real patchwork couture. And that's why I will make it out of silk, trying to follow the original pattern as close as it possible. So this is the fabric I picked up for the top part of the dress. Left side is brown, maybe I will take brown with some pattern to make it kind of more interesting. Then the right part is dark pink, one sleeve is brown with stripes and another one is green. So I think it's quite good, let's make it. And it's very important to iron the seams nicely, because it will make it look more like one piece. Here is the top, it looks cute and very recognizable I think, so now let's make the skirt and I will actually start with drawing the placement of the pieces. Yeah, something like this. Now let's find pieces of fabric that will look good here. And then I will connect them together. And you can see I found really mountain of silk pieces try to fit this pattern. So, and this is where I've ended up with my patchwork, now it looks already super cute and I don't really need to make it longer. So now I think I can connect the top and the bottom parts of the dress together. Now I'm going 
to add the stitches, but you know, I don't really want to make them black and rough looking. Instead of it, I'm going to stitch it up with a golden thread. And it will be the finishing touch to my patchwork couture dress this time. After this I can sew the back of the skirt and this is it I think. And here it is. Check it out, I've added a piece of velcro to the back of the dress and now it looks completely finished and you know on one hand it's still 100% recognizable as a Sally's dress. And at the same time, it looks much more fashionable and more sophisticated, probably, because I use silk and a golden tinsel. So it's very cute, very special, and at the same time, very recognizable. So now, guys, we need to make a pair of shoes for her. Sally wears simple black shoes or maybe boots with some striped socks or maybe these are leg warmers, it's difficult to say what it is exactly. So let's start with making a pair of black shoes out of Warbler Thermoplastic. Okay, these are the shoes, I think they will work for this look today, but now I still want to make a pair of leg warmers out of this stretch fabric with stripes. So, and this is it. These are the finished shoes. I think they represent quite well what Sally's shoes would look like in real life. So, now it's time to move on to the accessories. And I want to make a couple of jars with potion ingredients that Sally had. Remember, she had one with a frog jumping out of a jar, and another one was with deadly nightshade. So, I'm going to start with printing a couple of jars and also a couple of frogs using my 3D printer. Thank you. 
I was not really sure which size frog would work the best for the jars. So I've printed a couple of them within a couple of millimeters of difference and then I can decide later which one to use. But first I have to wash and then I have to cure the painted models. Okay, look, I've ended up removing the back legs of the biggest frog and I'm going to use it like this because you can see that even the smallest frog doesn't go into the jar because of these legs. So we are going to use the frog like this and the next step would be making a hole in the frog's belly. And <laughs> yes, I'm sorry frog, you are really going through a lot today. Then I'm going to take a spring from a pen, just regular tiny spring from a regular pen and I will attach it to the frog's belly. I told you it's a hard day for the frog and I'm going to use acrylic resin to connect them together. Now I can paint the doll, then I'm going to add shadows and then I will draw labels on the jars. So and now when everything is perfectly painted I just need to install the frog into the jar and for this I will use acrylic resin again.
I can push the frog down, I can close the jar and when I open it the next time the frog will jump out of it. second jar I will put a piece of a fake plant because Sally had a plant in it. So this is it! Everything seems to be working like it should, everything looks good and it means it's time to take a look at the end result pictures. So and this is my finished Sally, my smart, adventurous and romantic girl. I was a bit worried about this makeover because I wanted to make her very cute, but I wasn't really sure how she would look with all these stitches and no eyebrows, you know, but strangely enough, looking at her right now, this is probably one of the cutest dolls I've ever made, really one of the cutest faces ever. I don't know, her face looks just adorable and at the same time she looks like Sally 100%. She's absolutely recognizable, I think. So I was also especially worried about her dress because I wasn't sure if I could make it recognizable and fashionable at the same time. And also, you know, making patchwork out of natural silk is a challenge on its own. But, you know, strangely enough, it looks even better than I could have imagined. So, I'm very happy about everything in this project. My special mention goes to the jars. I had fun working on them and the end result looks just adorable and very original. So, despite all my worries and all my fears, I'm super proud of this project. I don't know, I should have made Sally a long time ago, really years ago. But right now I feel like the Corpse Bride should be one of the next projects for me to make in some near future. I don't know, what do you think? Or do you want to see me something else? Should I make someone else? Please let me know in the comments under this video. And also, of course, please don't forget to share your thoughts, your impressions about these projects also in the comments under this video. So, and if you want to own this doll, please check the link in the description under this video. She is available for sale for three days on eBay right now, so maybe this one is for you. So, and that was my doll transformation of the week. I really hope you've enjoyed it today. And if so, please guys, don't forget to support my art here on YouTube with your likes. Of course, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell button, and I will see you already very soon. Next week, Friday, it's gonna be something special. Last time I've promised you something special, but I'm still busy, but I already see that I'm going to finish it very soon. So, next week, Friday, see you here on my channel and now have a nice weekend love you guys bye